hey guys good morning and good evening so i'm back with uh, one of the latest video of news of online learning so uh, i was busy uh, over uh, last couple of days and that's why i was not able to prepare some uh, good videos or on uh, new topics so but it it good like uh, uh, today i will be covering one of the topics which is uh, like very less available as in the resources over google and other websites and uh, this is like uh, um, not exactly being supported by milsoft as well but uh, some of the times we need to find a way to get it uh, enabled for our systems so yes i am talking about dockers and the dockerization of mule4 applications so this particular video is more concentrated about the integration or you can say the implementation of mule4 with docker it will involve creating the baseline images of mule4 runtime then we will be playing around with one of a sample mule4 app and we will get it deployed and uh, try to um, hit a test run using postman so let's get started so guys in order to start this video uh, we, we will be requiring some prerequisite and as part of that you need to install docker uh, desktop on your local machine so i am just checking out on the google and typing docker desktop I just click over here the first link and it gives the two option docker download for mac and for windows so this is uh, on the mac machine so i have already downloaded using this uh, option and after that you have to simply uh, install the docker desktop as you do for the rest of the uh, mac based applications or in case of windows there will be msi file you have to just accept the default and the agreements over there and get it installed so after installing the docker desktop it will come up somewhere on the taskbar like this uh, this particular icon and if you click over here within some uh, fraction of second it will start it will start showing docker desktop is starting to the running state and if uh, if it doesn't then you may need to consider like creating a new sign up on the uh, docker desktop using a uh, sign up option over here and you can also uh, figure out the restart and the other capabilities so i would like to show you the preferences of it like if you click on the preferences it will show uh, some of the basic things like you want to configure if required uh, basically this cpu memory swap and disk image so i would suggest you to run it at least on 8 gb or more uh, ram size of your machine and uh, you can adjust these cpus memory and swap accordingly because some of the times what happen like if you are downloading the images or uh, setting up the container uh, it may show some of the errors so you may want to juggle around these particular options just try to make sure like you are putting a uh, memory roughly double that of swap and uh, and uh, the cpu you should have at least eight CPUs that is by default apart from that if you are um, working over a proxy then you need to manually make some changes over here by enabling this and putting some details as provided by your um, um, proxy provider if not you can keep it disabled apart from that network it will show your subnet and if you want to change it here is the way you can change directly from the UI apart from that it also gives the option of uh, the command line so you can enable it and it will be uh, asking you to apply and restart but uh, for this particular use case we will not be um, exploring this particular option we will limit our discussion around setting up the 
Mule for uh, base image and a sample Mule for app and get deployed within the uh, Docker uh, containers. So till this step we have configured our Docker desktop and it is uh, up and running as you can see. Now the next thing will be to start with uh, some of the um, basic things like you have to first create a folder for um, for this particular example I have created a folder named as docker demo apart from that uh, you will be requiring a uh, either a full um, license version of your mule runtime um, if not don't worry you can still uh, look for the mule standalone that is the CE the community edition of the mule runtime so how to get that so if you see this one mule for runtime developer I'm just putting some of the keywords and let's say this one so if you check this out it will give you mule kernel without any point studio and go for zip or tar zip so accordingly you can download it just click on zip folder and it will start downloading this particular zip file copy paste uh, this zip file downloaded from your downloads folder to this particular folder like docker demo like I have placed it over here apart from this apart from this we will be creating a docker file and I will uh, walk you through this particular docker file but before that I will let you know like what is this new hello jar is all about so you have to just open your endpoint studio so some couple of things happened over last uh, couple of days like uh, as you have seen like it was showing endpoint studio 7.5 so yes guys this is the latest release from uh, from MuleSoft uh, now it is bundled with uh, Mule Runtime 4.3.0 and this is the latest Mule Runtime which comes up with lot of bug fixes with respect to API gateway, data wave upgradation, some of the new functions are being uh, being added, and memory leaks. And there is a overhaul changes in thread uh, management. So I will be discussing more about it in uh, in later videos, uh, which I am going to create specifically around this particular topic. But uh, uh, let me tell you about this. So this is like the Mule Hello app which uh, we were referring in our um, Docker demo folder. So in Mule Hello, this is very basic. Uh, this is a listener listening on particular HTTP port. Let me show you what exactly it is. So the path is Docker, and uh, the HTTP listener config is by default is zero eight one. You can test the connection as well. So earlier uh, you have noticed like I was continuously changing so uh, I've changed this particular port uh, by removing the application which was earlier listening on 8081. Basically it was a Jenkins instance and I have removed it for the time being. Apart from that we are specifically logging the message welcome to the docker mule demo and within the set payload I am putting on. Uh, just a uh, random message which, which will show through invoked at one at what particular time in particular time under time format and then again putting one more logger as it is being completed successfully so i have just saved and exported this using right click and um, the export option so just go for the new archive option deployable archive click on next and then you know, I have pointed it to the Docker demo folder. Remove this particular option and create a uh, only the project modules and dependencies. Click finish and it will create the new hello jar. One more thing, as 
structure this is a maintainer this is a normal type which shows you who is creating this particular docker file after that we will be setting up the uh, environment variables namely mule home so as we have noticed like it is quite similar to what we have in the unix environment slash opd slash mule after that uh, uh, we will be putting uh, our jet file onto the opt folder putting our hello jar file onto the opt folder and then we will be running a set of commands which includes like going into the opt folder after that unzipping it and then moving the unzip extracted folder to the mule folder inside opt mule so we are we are already in opt so we just need to put it inside the mule folder after that we need to set up the working directory as mule home and we will need to create some of the familiar folders like app conf domains and logs inside the mule home location so volume will be creating the uh, you can say the um, mounted folders onto the uh, onto the docker container after that to this particular command is just to install the mule license if you are using a uh, if you are having a enterprise edition of mule runtime so you can copy you can put the uh, license key onto the same uh, folder location and copy paste onto the conf and after that you have to run the hyphen install licenses command to get it installed uh, after this uh, this uh, this particular command will cross check like uh, if uh, it is being available in the conf so this is for the debugging purpose after that we will be uh, copying our mule hello jar onto the mule home apps and again this is just to make sure it is being copied properly the next and the most crucial part of this uh, docker file is the http post we need to expose to the uh, as part of our new labs so i i am exposing a range of posts ranging from 8081 to 8091 apart from that 9982 5000 for remote debugging 1098 for gm export for mmc double seven double seven for amc triple nine seven so these are quite generic you can you can uh, put a hash mark uh, in the front of these particular commands if you don't want to expose a particular uh, port and after that the last command will be to start the mule runtime by setting up the entry point that is we will be starting from bin mule so just save this file and uh, place it in the same folder as you can see over here so the vital things are the docker file the mule hello jar and mule standalone uh, runtime so now let's go to the terminal window and uh, we will go to this particular folder that the next step will be to build the uh, image for this particular uh, new standalone file so there is set of commands which i have already saved over here so i will copy paste this particular command onto the terminal window we will be changing here and there the name of the container so i will be putting it docker demo docker mule demo and i will hit enter let me maximize this so you can see it is now running a step by step all the things first it is downloading it from the open jdk but somehow it added out so i need to check what is the issue over here give me a moment Changes in the local file for this very first. Let me quickly go to the Docker demo, Docker file. I just want to make sure I am not misspelling anything. Close this guy. 
Das Stadt ist eine ganze Runde daneben, da verfallen wir uns ja nicht so sehr gut. Ja, jetzt sind wir was am um, um, Spelling Mistakes. But after that, it will start a step by the execution of all the commands which we have already put down. Now, here it is extracting, moving the file onto the new folder, creating some of the like setting of the entry point. So, we are pretty much done. So, this uh, image is now created with Docker Mule demo for our new runtime, and even the jar file is being copied somewhere. So, here you can see this particular section, it is copying. After that, LSRT will give the about it. So next step would be to uh, run the container. So there is a command from that. Uh, let me show you that command. One second guys. So this standard commands and you just need to change here and there so you need to change the last guy that is you need to maintain on docker node demo and after that you need to change this guy from 912081 now what it will do it will redirect all the com all the incoming request on L081 to L082 port. Okay, so let's hit enter. Just keep a very close look on this particular thing. See, this is running all the things and initializing the new malware, and uh, it is getting deployed. So we are pretty much done from this side. Our new running current time instance is running. Application is deployed. So let's do some more check. I will be creating a new window and I will type Docker PS. So let me maximize this guy. So here you can see the container with the image is available. So there is one more command. This particular thing, I will explain it as well. Now, so Docker, see Docker execute in the interactive mode using terminal and use this particular container name. So we have to delete and this is randomly generated, so don't worry about it. Just you run the Docker PS and you will come to know what is the name currently assigned. After that, then bash. So basically, it will uh, execute and open up the Docker container using the bin bash environment. And uh, as you can see, we are already inside the OPP mule. So let's do LSLTR. As you can see, there are multiple folders, but quite similar what we observed in mule runtime. So, so let's go inside CD apps folder. Do LSLTR here as well. So as usual, the jar file is being now extracted into the folder in the anchor txt file. So this confirms that our application is deployed. Uh, apart from that, so let's go to the logs folder and see what is in there for us. So it is having the mule, uh, the enterprise studio, sorry, the runtime log, the application log. And this is the default login for the domain. So we are pretty much okay over here. Let's put a page on new hello log maybe. Okay, hello log. Okay. We will just keep it as it is and quickly go to our postman. So we we'll let it load for some time. And I will be changing a bit here and there. So we have redirected to 8082. And here you can see my new instance is completely stopped, nothing running. Hit send button. 
minutos, a couple of seconds. So okay, now it should like it is going to move to 456. So let's take some time and let's hit it again. 25009. So this means our application is getting proper response. So what if I change it back to the previous uh, port which is being set up in our new hello app? That is Azure Atom. But just to remind you, this Azure Atom was very specific to our new application um, app which is created at the build time using Eloquent Studio. But this is now being mapped to Azure Atom using uh, one of the commands. Let me show you. using this command so azure 81 was mapped to azure 82 inside the docker setup so let me try to hit on azure 81 it should add out yes uh, this this is good so then i will hop back to azure 82 and now it's running fine so let's quickly go to the other window So here you can see all the things like to complete it successfully, welcome to the new demo, welcome to the new demo, complete successfully. So we executed three times and it is repeating our uh, log instances accordingly. So guys this is like one of the very basic um, example or use case which I have defined using need for standalone uh, runtime 420 to be specific i hope uh, this particular video helps you to further explore the different capabilities of uh, docker pile docker setup and how to um, use the different scaling and uh, the different options of memory you can play around so this should act as like one of the stepping stone towards the uh, towards the main building of creating the standalone applications. Uh, some of the times I got this question like why you are referring Docker's when you already have RTL that is runtime fabric and cloud hub in place. So guys, uh, this is very specific to your uh, organization policies and guidelines there there are certain times when uh, an organization is already on on the on-premise setup because of phi and pii specific data they don't want to share anything to the external world because of privacy issues or they may be reluctant to go towards the uh, any public cloud be it new cloud hub or any aws they just want to keep it on their on-premise setup so docker is the way forward towards it and of course within the docker you can also use it in conjunction with the aws uh, private cloud setup so that that all is possible and uh, nevertheless to say whenever we hop to rtf or any other new specific uh, uh, setup like arm or anything other you you need to pay for an extra license cost Whereas it uh, for Docker it is not that much costly as compared to new uh, license cost. So of course there is a uh, give and take between the uh, two different scenarios. So guys I hope you like this video. Uh, please stay tuned for the upcoming exciting uh, videos of Mules of Online Learning. Thank you and have a great day.